If you're looking for a body transformation, you won't find it here. I've been skinny, I've been skinny fat, I've been ripped, I've been jacked, and I've been ultra ripped. I love every element of fitness. The body to me is a piece of art that you can create and recreate. When it comes to the workouts, I always focus on function meets fashion. So what does that mean? I want to be able to prove that you don't have to be a bodybuilder to build a body. Now function meets fashion, meets fun, most importantly meets family. I look forward to every day to working our asses off with other members. The difference in personalities and coaches, the change up of the workout daily, and just knowing that we're getting 1% better every single day. Now when it comes to nutrition, I used to eat like Rocky. I remember one time I put eggs, raw eggs, in a cup and I left it in my gym bag for the entire day. Man, I had food poisoning. But I used to think that that was the way that you would eat. There's a difference between clean and dirty eating. And for me, you have to earn your food. Now, I'm never on a typical diet. And honestly, when it comes to food, nary is my rock when it comes to eating. If it were up to me, I'd have takeout every single day. But to maintain my personal expectations for my body and my health, I gotta enjoy the colors. I gotta have my fruits, my vegetables, my browns, my grays, my whites, everything. The only time I was fat is when I actually took time off the gym to study. Now we're going way back, but I felt and I looked my worst. My brain was clouded, my jeans stopped fitting. I couldn't even play sports. I needed to change my habits and the way that I structured my day. Taking a month off wasn't an option. Even some progress is always better than no progress. Now, what was my first day like? Yes, there was a first day for me. We transitioned from reps to timed. Boot camp was hard. I remember doing battle ropes and we had a timer on for 30 seconds. I was dead. Circuit training, 30 seconds on, 15 seconds off. And there was even burpees. I've never done a burpee in my life. So to me, that was my day one. Everybody has a day one. So we went from reps to time. It felt like I was truly dying. But you know what? I grew to love Fit Club. I grew to love our style of workout. And every day, like I said, I look forward to coming. And every day I look forward to the challenge and the push. Now through the journey from my original business, NLT, to now where it is, Fit Club. It wasn't always lights, camera, and action. Let's take it back to Fit Club's humble beginning. Welcome to the original home of Fit Club. Here's your parking lot. Let's go to the front entrance. That was the secret knock back in the day. Oh, look at this, it's our front receptionist. Catherine, how are you? Give us a flex here. <laughs> so you used to have to come downstairs. Here's the VIP lounge, <laughs> right here. Then you would come into the main entrance. Ensuite laundry. <laughs> look at this, oh yeah. Here's the gym, baby. Woo! <laughs> Here's the weights. You guys remember these? <laughs> so when I decided to go full-time trainer, this was my first position. And you guys got to understand the grind that I went to. In this very parking lot, I used to stay from five in the morning till midnight. I used to put a little bed in the back of my 93 Ford Probe. I used to sleep here, sleep here between clients. And man, I loved every minute but we had to evolve, so we moved over to the dungeon. So this is where Fit Club actually started. But back in the day, it was known as NLT. We used to have to park all the way around the corner. We used to have to walk all the way here through the snow, through everything, and everybody could never find the door. They used to actually just go into the school, but you had to look for this little sign. Now we can't actually go down there because you probably have to get some type of special permission, but take a peek inside and you'll get the idea. This place was dirty, dungy, and dusty, but man, we made the best of it. And honestly, it helped us grow into the community that we are. We had to make many pivots and changes. And one of the biggest pivots that we made 
was during lockdown, we started virtuals. And I've never done a virtual class before. I've never done a body weight style workout, 100% body weight. I've always been a meat and potatoes type of guy. Lift, jump, sprint, move things, pick things up, move them over there, put them down, rinse and repeat. I was sore on sore. We started coming up with these crazy exercises like kick and punch, never surrender, wacky jackies, and once again, burpees were brought back. But honestly, I grew to really, really love doing the virtuals. I've been working out for over 30 years now. I've had many setbacks, I've had many injuries throughout my fitness career, but nothing has ever set me back further than the day I fractured my knee. Now I've never had a day one. I've had multiple trying something new and dying, but I've always been involved with sports. I've always been working out in some form or fashion. And losing function of a major body part, struggling to do the things like getting off the couch, lying in bed, taking a shower. The hardest part about my knee fracture was my youngest son, Kai. He was born and I couldn't even help my then freshly pregnant, freshly given birth wife. I couldn't carry him, I couldn't drive. And honestly, that was one of the hardest times of my life. But that's a day one for me. So how does that work for me with the clients? Is that I always try to keep myself relatable to each and everybody's person. I may not be in the same stance as you, I might not be the same weight as you, I might not have the same fitness background as you, but I try to put my mindset into the mindset of you and I feel like that knee fracture was a day one. What did I learn from this? Well, number one is that I'm not afraid to push myself to the limit. Do I want to get hurt again? Do I want to go through surgery and go through six months and no sleep and all that? Heck no, right? But I have no problem pushing myself. I always say you got to find where that line is go across the line and then step back where you need to, but you never know until you really challenge yourself. So my knee right now is in the best shape that it's ever been ever since I was a teenager. So what do I learn? I gotta know the warning signs, right? But you have to know where those limits are. And it's okay to say no, right? It's okay to say no. If you're just starting your fitness journey off and your mindset is strong, then yes, you can take a day off. But if you're just starting your fitness journey and you're giving yourself a pass, then I would tell you that you need to keep going, right? As long as you're not pushing yourself to the point of injury, keep going, but know where those limits are, cross them, step back. And one of the biggest things that I learned from this was to slow down and enjoy the journey. We don't have to accomplish everything today. We got tomorrow and we got the next day. Let's do this for the long run. Now, the one big thing that I want for you is to know that quitting is not an option. My mission at Fit Club is to keep a member for the rest of their life. This is why I got into this. I want to grow with you for the rest of your life. There's four major portions in your life, or at least three at the minimum. You got your family, you got your finances, you got your faith, and you got your fitness. And without all four, you're not in balance and you're not going to live a long, healthy life. And so I try to provide a home here so that everybody can come here. They look forward to coming every day, getting 1% better. My biggest fear isn't someone leaving for another gym, moving away, getting busy, can't afford it, getting injured, because you can always come from that. My biggest fear is someone quitting on themselves because you only have one body. Your health drives every other aspect of your life because you got to understand that this isn't a challenge. This isn't a weight loss challenge. This isn't a fat loss challenge. This isn't a fitness challenge. This is for life. We're all familiar with the term influencer. Today, influencers are everywhere, filling up our social media feeds on a daily basis, pushing everything from useful information on nutrition and life hacks to less useful tidbits like the latest dance trend on TikTok. But what about the real influencers in your life? The people who have a true impact on you? Who are they? Maybe it's a family member or a teacher, a mentor at work, or even a celebrity or a sports star. When we were younger, these true influencers seemed to be everywhere. But as we got older, they tend to become less prevalent in our lives and harder to find. But does that mean we should stop looking? Should we give up on finding people who inspire us to do better? To keep a positive attitude and level up as human beings? I think the answer is no. We can all become better human beings if we continue to seek out champions and learn from their experience. One such champion is RJ, the man who brought each and every one of us here today. Today we celebrate the man, and even though he doesn't look much different, because he barely seems to age, 
I believe he is completely different than he was many years ago. Over the years, he's gone through gym name changes, a location change, a complete overhaul of the staff, a smashed kneecap, and he got married and had two kids. And then there was COVID and a full gym lockdown. No problem. He rallied his troops and pivoted his business direction almost instantaneously. When most people simply gave up, he adapted and thrived. And through it all, he never seemed to have many bad days, which is something that was always intriguing. How is it that this guy never seems to get angry about anything? Doesn't care about the news, the government, the weather, and all the other things that people are so bothered about. How does he handle this many clients with all their personal and physical issues? How does he deal with all his coaches and all the egos and attitudes and not get angry in front of everyone? He handles his challenges himself and with his close circle of friends. He puts on a smile for everyone else and always remembers that the show must go on. That's extreme forward thinking and watching how he handles tough situations has been very impressive. As we celebrate his 1000th workout, each of us here could undoubtedly think of a number of things we've learned from this influencer within these walls. Three things that stand out. Number one, be authentically you. Be who you are and be true to that. Number two, with hard work, you can overcome anything. And number three, if you have a goal, you must keep doing what it takes to achieve it. Do not quit. RJ, thank you for being an influencer to all of us. Congrats on the big 1,000 and welcome to the wall. Why is 1,000 workouts important to me? Well, number one, I get to be amongst many legends. Number two, I'm proud to say I work out at my gym. And number three, I wanna set the example of hard work and dedication. Honestly, if I can, they can, you can. Now, what would I tell someone thinking about joining? Well, everybody has a one day, but not everybody has a day one. It's gonna get tougher before it gets better, but if you keep going, life is gonna get better. What does 1% better mean to me? Well, I'm gonna tell you the story. One day we were on a hike. It was a steep rock, a mountain, and it started to rain. I had my son on the back. I had no options but to put my head down, look at my feet, take one step at a time. And all I kept saying to myself is 1%, 1%, 1%. And so for you, I want that to be your mission, is that no matter what obstacles you're facing in life, no matter what you're going through, no matter who gets in your way or what gets in your way, all I want you to do is put one foot in front of the other and get 1% better. Face your fears, start your journey, take your time, but most importantly, get 1% better. I'm Coach RJ, we'll see you on the blue.